Orange to black belts. I'm glad to see you guys back after the weekend. Happy to see you all smiling on Zoom, hopefully smiling on YouTube later. And guys, I hope you had a great Mother's Day. I hope you treated mom to something special on Mother's Day. <clears throat> and I hope no one's going, oh, I forgot Mother's Day. Because that would not be good. Okay, here we go. I want everybody to start by kneeling down and we're gonna say the student creed for the first time in a while, and then we're gonna actually do a, a drill from the kneeling position, okay? So let's put our hands on our knees, sitting up nice and tall, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and repeat after me or say it together. Go ahead. As a student of the martial arts, I seek to develop true confidence through knowledge of the mind, honesty in the heart, and strength in the body. I will continue to develop self-discipline in order to bring out the best in myself and in others. Open your eyes and bow. All right, guys, so from this position, we're going to do something called kneeling stances. Now, this is not what it sounds like necessarily, but we definitely start in a kneeling position. So it's not going to be kneeling stances as in like doing katas on your knees, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to start from a kneeling position. And then when I say go, we're going to jump to a uh, stance. So for example, if it's kibarachi, then you're going to jump the bare minimum just to get your feet underneath you, and then you're going to go into a kibarachi. So for example, I'll do the first one, I'll say go, and then you're going to stand in a kibarachi and hold it there until I say, you know, relax or down or stop or whatever. Okay? So everybody sit up nice and tall. Get ready, and you're gonna jump up to a kibarachi stance, training the explosive muscles in our legs. Ready? Go! Kibarachi. Hold it there. Relax. Again, we're in those explosive muscles. Ready? Two. Relax, try to keep your back straight, two. Don't be leaning forward like this. Do the next one without me, I have to lock somebody in. Ready, three. And relax, ready. And again, do the bare minimum that you can to get your feet underneath you. I don't want you jumping like 10 feet in the air and then separating your legs and then coming down. I just want you to get up high enough to slip your feet underneath you. So front stance. See that? I just jumped high enough just to get my feet underneath me in a nice front stance. And then when I say relax or down or whatever, then we'll go back down, okay? Here we go, let me see your first front stance. Ready, one. And relax, kneeling down. Ready. Two. And if somebody's around, they can test your balance once you're in your stance. And relax. Three. And relax. Four. And relax. Let me see number five. Ready? Five. Good, and relax. 
Now, sorry, my allergies. Now, if you guys have been switching back and forth, I want you to keep switching back and forth. If you've been doing one leg five times, I now want you to do the other leg five times. Okay? Here we go. One. Jump up to that front stance. Let me see it. Relax. Two. Relax. Three. Relax. Four. Relax. And relax. Okay, everyone. Last thing that we're gonna do, keep it, uh, uh, sorry, horse, no, that's the same thing. Back stance, back stance, finally. Okay, so, this time when we jump, we wanna favor one leg over the other, right? So when we jump, I don't want you just jumping into another kibadachi, I want you jumping into a kokutsudachi. Back stance. And then when I say relax, then you can come back down. Okay, so your feet need to be like this, not like this, like this, right? Back stance. Ready? One. And down. Ready? Two. And down. Three. And relax. Relax. Five. See how my heels are lined up ish. I got one just like an inch for the back. Okay, other side this time. Okay, we got two sides. So now you're gonna favor the other leg. So you're gonna be having 60% minimum on the back leg. One sec, just gotta log somebody in. You guys can start, ready? One. Down. Ready. Two. And relax. Ready. Three. And relax. Four. Relax. Five. but standing relax this time. Okay, now I just want you to go into your kibadachi and we're gonna do the tewaza very quickly, okay? So everybody, kibadachi, hut. Right hand up, 27 blocks, tewaza. Ready, ich, ni, san, shi, go, ro, shich, hach, kyu, chu, ich, ni, san, Shi, go, ro, shich, hach, chu, chu, ich, ni, san, shi, go, ro, shich. 
Nice work. Okay, everybody standing up, please. By the way, if you find yourself, you have a chair nearby, and you don't want to necessarily, you know, do a whole bunch of uh, moving around or anything like that, totally like a fun drill to do and a good workout to do is throwing your kicks from a seated position because it takes way more from your hips because you can't use your back really because you're in a seated position, right? Doing your kicks from here. Also, going into a kibarachi, like at the edge of your chair, this is really working my flexibility. So I'm just making sure, or even if I'm at the back of my chair, making sure that my knees stay apart and just practicing my blocks. I don't even have to stand up, but I'm working my groin muscles, the flexibility, okay? So that's just a little tip for those of you who are like, Finding yourself, ah, I don't really feel like doing a workout. You can do a workout from a seated position. Like, we're getting really creative here. We're spending lots of time at home. I know we become very unmotivated if we're spending tons of time at home, but that's one way you can stay motivated, being like, ha, I don't even have to stand up for a workout, sucker. Okay, so, everybody, let's go into a nice front stance. And I'm gonna go along this line right here. Nice front stance. Notice how my feet, are staggering, are staggering, are straddling the line, right? I'm not standing on the line in my front stance. I have a wide enough stance that nobody can push me side to side. I can move my leg over, right? But I'm not too wide so that if somebody pushes me back, I don't have any support. And if somebody pushes me forward, I don't have any support, right? So I need to make sure I have support everywhere. Side to side, good, forward, back, good. Okay, just punching and stepping. I'm going forward for two steps and backwards for two steps. If you have room for 12 steps, good for you. I'm doing two, okay? Ready, one. Use your front leg to pull you forward. Two. Moving back, use your back leg to pull you back. One. Two. Punch from your front hand, okay guys? Ready, one. Two. Moving back, one. make straight lines with the tape so that you don't color the baseboard, blah, 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 blah. So, um, put some painter's tape on the floor if you want, or you know whatever you can do to mark the, mark the floor. I wouldn't use a karate belt for this instance, because you actually have to put your heels on the line and the belt would crimple and everything. So, I'm gonna be here with both heels on the line, and then I'm gonna step forward. So watch my, watch my foot position here, okay? I'm turning my front foot to open my hips, then I'm stepping straight forward. Boom, and I stay both heels on the line, right? Then when I move back, same thing, I'm leaning back on my back leg, I'm dragging my back foot back, step, and then rotate, okay? So keep your heels in a nice straight line. You almost step into a hook stance halfway. So if you wanted, technically, you could pause here, and what stance is that? That's a hook stance, but not necessary though. Just step straight through, because then it'll all be in one motion. Okay, you can just shoot those or not here. I just want to focus on the stances for today. Okay, back stance, ready. One, stances, heels on the line. Ready, two, moving back. One, two, moving forward. One, two, moving back. One, two, moving forward, one, two, moving back, one, two, moving forward, 
One. Two. Moving back. One. Two. Moving forward. One. Two. Moving back. One. And two. Nice. Okay, guys. Now, I want you guys to uh, go back to front stance, but we're going to do half turn, quarter turn, three quarter turn. And I also want you to use this line here. Okay? If you're doing a half turn, if you're doing any turn with your front leg, then I want your back leg to be on the line. Okay? And I'm going to use this line up front here as an example, and then I'll use the middle one. So watch. If I have my right leg in front and I'm doing a half turn, what I want to do is I want to move my front leg from this side of the line to the other side of the line. So I'm going to look behind me. If I step straight back and stay on this line, I'm going to be standing on a tightrope, right? That's too narrow. So I need to make sure that I step on an angle. Boom. And now I've got a nice stance. And that was my pivoting leg, so it stayed on the line, but the other leg crossed over, right? If I'm going to do another half turn, step over the line, right? I always cross over that line diagonally, just like that. So this is what it will look like with your line facing straight, facing me straight, right? I got one foot on the line. The, the front foot is uh, on one side of the line. I'm stepping 45 degrees. Boom. Just like that. Boom. Boom, just like that, okay? So, half turns, moving your front leg, but I don't want you to do this. Watch, watch, I don't want you doing this. Obviously, that's an exaggeration, but believe it or not, people do that. They push, they use all of their weight. Like, I need to go that way, right? So why would I put all of my weight in the opposite direction that I need to go? Instead, all I'm gonna do is lean that way because I need to go that way. So I'm just going to lean and then step, right? Almost lose my balance and recover my balance. Lose my balance and recover my balance. Why? It's not just for keeping your balance and stuff like that. It's also for speed, right? Leaning this way, lifting all your weight up, turning, coming back down. Way inefficient use of energy and time, right? If I need to get over there, just lean over there and go. Don't See how much longer that took? I can just step. Just step. Just move the leg that you intend to move. Okay? So, half turns. Let's go. I know I've been doing lots of this. We have been doing lots of this. Half turn. Right leg in front, left leg in behind. 45 degree step over the line. Ready? Half turn. One. Look. Two. It also helps to look where you're going. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you should not be dizzy, and I'll tell you why right now, is because you shouldn't be going like this. Okay? You should be looking first and then stepping. Looking first and then stepping. So if I'm already looking over there, then my head's not whipping around. Because that's how you get dizzy, is your head whipping around. If you get your head around first, you won't get dizzy. Okay, let's do now the quarter turn. So a quarter turn is when we move our foot 90 degrees. So, uh, how am I going to do this here? Uh, moving the left leg 90 degrees. So from here, okay, my left leg, is here, I need to step over that line over there. Right? Let me see. So, I'm facing where the line is pointed. Now I need to face the opposite direction. So the line is running this way, I need to face the opposite. Then I'm going to go back on the line. Straight. Then I'm going to go back off the line. Okay? Here we go. Quarter turn. Left leg moves. One. Two. Where do I need to go? That way. So I'm going to lean that way. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Look where you're 
where you're going, okay? Nine. Ten. Good. 90 degrees, quarter turn. Sweet. Okay, guys. Last one that we're going to do is we're going to... Oh, okay, never mind. Second last thing that we're going to do... See, I, this is why I always have my notes. I didn't get a good sleep last night. My short-term memory is not that good. That's why I write things down. Okay, so we're going to do three-quarter turns now. So three-quarter turn, in my opinion, is a really easy turn, but it's a really hard one to teach, right? So from here, if I'm standing at the top of a T, so if there's a T on the floor, I need to not only line up with that T, I actually need to take my back leg and step over that T. Which direction do I need to go? That way. So which way am I going to lean? That way. Boom. And catch my balance. Right? So which way am I going to lean? That way. And step. Just like that. So I'm at the T, and I step over the top of the T. Okay? I'm making a bit wider stances than are necessary, but it's just to kind of illustrate the point that you need to step over that perpendicular line. Okay? All right, let's do uh, 10 three quarter turns. Ready? One. Back. Two. Ooh, lost my balance. Too wide, see? Back. Don't go too wide. Three. Back. Four. Back. Five. Back. Six. Back. Seven. Back. Sorry. Eight. Make sure you look before you turn. Nice work, guys. Back. Nine, make sure that you're stepping over that perpendicular line. Back. And last one, 10. And back. Okay, now this is the last drill that we're gonna do. Before we start doing uh, katas, or sorry, we're doing breakdowns today actually, but see the noodle? Ah, you may not see the noodle. Okay, now you see the noodle. So. Get someone to hold something over your head. I don't care if it's a noodle. I don't care if your siblings hold a belt and stretch it like a limbo bar, okay? What you're gonna do is you're going to do a stance, but you're gonna stay at the same level. Because the last thing that we wanna do is keep altering our level of gravity, okay? We wanna keep a low center of gravity. So when I'm stepping forward, I don't wanna go up and down, up and down. Why? Because then my head will keep disappearing out of the camera. No, just kidding. The reason is because I'm gonna be going up and down, I'm gonna be losing my center of gravity. Up here, boom, I've got a really terrible center of gravity. So what am I gonna do when I step forward? I'm gonna maintain my center of gravity. See, I didn't go up or down, I stayed low in my center of gravity. So nobody can push me, right? If I step up here, boom, I become top heavy. So, someone holds a, a something over your head, Okay, or maybe you can put something, right? And then you're going to do a stance underneath it, okay? To make sure that you don't go up and down. So do that. If you don't have anybody holding something for you, that's totally fine. All I want you to do is make sure that your knee travels downwards, not upwards. See, your knee travels downwards and then step. Knee travels downwards and then step, okay? Try that five times. And if you're doing this with a partner, then do it a little bit quicker to, to keep up with my instruction. Ready? And one step underneath. And then turn around and get into a good stance. And then two, step underneath. And then turn around. Three, step underneath. And then turn around. Four, step underneath. And turn around. And if you don't have anybody with you, then collapse your knee, remember. And five. Step underneath and turn around. Okay, switch partners or keep doing this exercise. Ready? And one, collapse that knee forward and then go. And two, buckle that knee forward and go. Three, I'm just moving my momentum this way. Four, moving my momentum this way. 
five. I'm moving my momentum this way. Nice work. Guys, remember, the way that you need to move is where you should be putting your weight, right? If I need to move over there, I'm not going to first go, right? What is the point of that? If I need to go this way, I'm going to step this way, right? Because that's the way I need to put my energy. So don't waste energy and resources like time uh, going the opposite direction, okay? All right, great job. We're going to do some bunkai.